Mark Kohlhorst knows his animals. Owner of the traveling zoo, Mark's Ark, and with over 40 species living on his property, he really is a modern day Noah. From horses to ducks, rabbits to frogs, Mark is an expert on all things cute and cuddly. But Mark also has a curiosity for the dangerous side of animal handling. His pride and joy are some of the world's most hostile predators. I'm gonna be getting out Ivy. Ivy is the larger of my two alligators. Really, quite honestly, not knowing what her type of temperament is, and she's quite different than any others that I've ever had. She is not friendly. This is not a normal pet. Um, you guys might want to stand back because she's going to get an avalanche of water. And the way she's presenting right here, she can take a hold of this and bust it easily. I go through a lot of these. You might ask why I do this. And when she is taped, she calms right down. She kind of knows this is a job. What I'm trying to do is get her tail so that I have control. There we go. That's really good. And then I can get her from behind. She is not happy. This is actually easier than it usually goes with her. So once I control her tail, and I've got the back of her head, then I can just press her firmly, but not harming her, down. And then her bite power is very powerful on the way down, but not up. Electrical tape only will tape against itself and not on her, so it doesn't pull her skin. She can breathe perfectly fine. And once I have her subdued like this, she can't bite, and she's really of no danger unless she decides she wanted to use her tail. I would feel completely confident in letting a very small child hold her now. And a lot of people are worried about the claws. The nails, they're not very sharp, actually. And they really don't serve a whole lot of purpose. They do dig in the mud. At four years old, Ivy's still relatively small. But Mark knows the dangers she will pose once she reaches adulthood. It is likely she will grow to nine feet long and weigh up to 250 pounds. Once she reaches five feet, she will be classified as a class three wild animal, and Mark will need to obtain a permit to keep her. Alligators are probably, in my opinion, one of the smarter reptiles. They definitely have anger. She has uh, almost got my fingers. She has got me across the back with her tail. Even for this size, it would feel like somebody taking a very broad belt across your back and just drive it right back. Exclusively found across America's southeast, alligators are some of the most menacing predators in the United States. Growing up to 15 feet and reaching 1,000 pounds, this is not a creature you want to run into unprepared. I've never had dogs or cats when I was a kid. My parents were very tolerant, and I always had exotics. Uh, one of my first pets was a, a spectacled caiman. It was nasty, evil. I really liked it. My dad enjoyed it, too. They're fascinating. They're, they're smart, strong. This type of animal has been around longer than dinosaurs. It's a tricky thing to call this a pet. I've known people that have had 12-foot alligators literally in their basement in a, the large city of Fort Wayne near here with their toddler child that jumps on its back and played with it and pet it. And the animal had free reign of the basement and a pond, a pool. Now that's a bit extreme for me. I, that, that won't ever happen. My child never goes near this animal unless it's in my hands and it's secured. This animal can be dangerous. Encounters between humans and alligators are on the increase in the United States. Worldwide, it's estimated that 1,000 people die every year as a result of crocodilian attacks. I have seen her take raw chicken legs and take that bone and just crunch it in half. And I've been bitten by another alligator before, and I thought I was going to lose my thumb. It was an alligator that was about a foot longer than this that I had. And I was in a hurry, in a rush, to go to a show. And even though he didn't have a temperament like this, he didn't like that hurried pace. He got a hold of my thumb, and the next thing I thought was, there goes my thumb. And he pressed down and bit down so hard, it felt like, I can't imagine the pressure. It just, I thought my thumb was gone. 
Alligator's teeth break off easily, and Mark's attack left him with a tooth lodged in his hand. They have the strongest bite pressure relative to size of any crocodilian, and Mark was lucky to escape further harm while at the mercy of this wild creature. A full-size alligator can bre break the femur of a cow. It's substantial. It's, it's incredibly strong. People buy them as a novelty. These are people that they decide they want to get a pet without ever having experience with any kind of exotic animals. They buy it. It's dangerous. They thought it was a novelty. They thought it was going to be cool. It was going to be really neat. And they learn that, you know, it's not a pet. That being said, I know my animals. I use these animals a lot for 11 years. This is a safe animal that I would never, ever, by any, any circumstances, ever let anybody get injured. While Mark is highly conscientious of his animals, unfortunately, the same cannot be said for all exotic pet owners. Juan Stewart is the chief veterinary officer and national director of American Humane Hollywood. Juan has spent many years working in animal shelters and is a strong advocate for the welfare and protection of both domesticated and wild animals. These reptiles, these birds, these small exotics, they require so much expertise, it would blow your mind. You get a small boa at your pet store and it's all of 18 inches. Well, one day that thing, if you feed it right and take care of it, it's gonna be, you know, eight, 10, 15 feet potentially. And then what do you do? I mean, they get discarded. And that's not fair for the animal they can become wild, vicious, dangerous animals. Years spent dealing with these crocodilians means Mark has experienced firsthand the wild nature of these highly powerful animals. Absolutely, this is a predator. Uh, you would not believe what this thing is capable of when it eats. I prefer to feed dead food when there's a situation where I have to feed live. 180 degrees different in their behavior. They are unbelievably fast, unbelievably violent. When you hear them, you know, killing their prey, and you hear the bones crunch, it's, there's no doubt about it. You just, you just hear it, it's And they want to kill it as quick as possible. They're very efficient, very efficient. When dealing with an alligator, as with any wild predator, Caution is key. Returning the alligator to its cage can be a particularly difficult task, and Mark approaches it with precision and care. The power is in her hip and, and, and her tail, so between my legs here, it's the best way I found to do it, and then I have to hold her very securely because she'll do that. And so she knows she's getting put away, and I've got to be very quick and careful with her because sometimes she'll come back at me. She's got a posture right now that's an aggressive posture. She's checking things out. She's kind of curious. Yeah, she's OK now. She's calmed down. She's going to probably just go right back up on her platform. She knows everything's done. Like many exotic enthusiasts, one predator is not enough to satisfy Mark's desire for the dangerous and mysterious. This is a Colombian red-tailed boa. She's about seven, eight years old. Her name is Rocky, Rocky Balboa. They can vary a lot in their color. She has bronze. This is one of South America's largest snakes, the green anaconda being the bigger. As an arboreal snake, Colombian red-tailed boas are natively found living in the treetops. They have the fastest strike of any snake and can easily catch monkeys and birds out of trees. She's almost eight feet long. She's strong enough that she could constrict enough to keep my chest from expanding to take in breath. So it's a very, very powerful snake. Even as a trained animal handler, Mark is not immune to the power of these highly dangerous snakes. Caught alone and unaware, he experienced their predatory nature and powerful grasp. I have had incidents before. When I was a zookeeper, I had a much larger one than this that didn't want to go back in its cage. And the snake did not want to let me go. It did not want to go back in the cage. And I struggled with the snake for well over an hour. 
I could not get to my radio. I was able to get the upper hand on it. I think I just literally had more energy than it did. And I was able to literally take it off like a pair of pants and slide it down. But when I was done, I can't remember, but only a few other times where I was so exhausted in my life. These are the strongest animals and their musculature and the way they hold on is different than anything else. I've been bitten by large snakes like this before and they're so fast that you don't even realize that you're bitten at first because it's so quick that even your nerve endings don't fire right. Honestly, you think, was I just bitten? And then you realize that you've got 60, 70 tooth marks in your arm from a snake like this and it's a half inch deep it bleeds for quite a long time before your blood clots and it does hurt. Imagine having 60 hypodermics all in one short, small area. This is not a domesticated or tame animal. You never know when you're gonna have a bad day with that animal, you just have to know the animal. I, I can kind of tell with my animals when, when they're not feeling good or anything. She's doing fine, she's, she's having a great time. If she were not, she would be closed up and, and tight. Perhaps the most widely feared of Mark's collection is his tarantula. While its venom won't kill you, the tarantula's razor sharp fangs and large hairy body make it infamous around the world. I don't know that I'm gonna be holding her. She just bit into this. And let me tell you what, it was quite something. She just dug her fangs right in that wood. I've held her before, but boy, she just drove them right in. This is a Chilean rose hair tarantula, a very common tarantula available in pet stores. They typically have a reputation as being a really calm spider. This is a female. Females can live a lot longer than males, up to 30 years. Males are short, seven to nine years. And I've never been bitten by a tarantula. Don't ever want to. <laughs> she has half inch fangs. The venom, though, is described as being relatively benign. The bite is what hurts. I mean, having half-inch fangs, two of them. And spiders are really soft. But what they do when they bite is they grab really powerful, and they bite and let go. That powerful grab is tremendous. Probably the snake and the spiders are the most fearful animals that I have, that I show. I am not a cat person, a wild cat person, small or large cat, and I'm not a primate person. I am completely against those type of animals. Big cats, primates, they're too smart for their own good, and they're dealing with an animal that matures like a human being, except they're a wild animal, and so when something turns 15 and their testosterone blooms four times greater than a human being in an animal that's only 30 or 40 pounds and you yank the chain around the neck of that animal one too many times and that animal wants to be dominant in a troop, you're in trouble. I worked with primates too long and um, they definitely are not a pet. This is something you can control, you can take care of. Uh, primates are not something for everybody, for anybody. Now, normally I would handle spiders a lot easier, come more comfortable than this, but I'm, she's, like I said, I'm a little more unfamiliar with her. This is not something I've done many times with her. These aren't for everybody, no, <laughs> no, definitely not. Mm -hmm.